Thank you for having me here. My name is Andreas Cochera. I'm professor um, of applied digital methods in the humanities at the University of Applied Science in Gießen. Wikidata and the GND are often mentioned when dealing with norm data, as they are well known to prove persons and places in medieval charters. However, in many sources, there are also other data that can be expressed by standards, for example, dates. Dealing with standards was the challenge when our project for the digitization of Register Imperii started in the early 2000s. So it's, it, it's a project of history of digital humanities, if you take it that way. This paper will describe the challenges when modeling dates from digitized sources and eva evaluate the usage of the extended date time format EDTF, which was created by the Library of Congress with the participation and support of the bibliographic community, as well as communities with related interests. It defines features for a date time string, features considered useful for a wide variety of applications. The Register Imperii compiles German summaries of the legally relevant contents of imperial, royal, and papal charters of the Middle Ages. The project started in 1829 and has a long history, even in the way Register have been laid out, structured, and printed. And this is the case for the date of issue of each Register as well. During digitization, we had to adopt individual rules for the treatment of digitized data for each volume. In the project, we digitized more than 130,000 register in full text. The first volume of the register Imperii dates from 1829, while the last ones were only recently published. The date formats used were correspondingly heterogeneous. And managing these dates was challenging as well. In the oldest volumes, like the Carolingian register, the dates were organized in a kind of a table. You can see the columns here. For getting all information on a specific <clears throat> date of issue, sometimes data from several pages had to be collected. Uncertainty in this format was expressed as double zeros. You can see it here, very small. So this uh, register has the date 770, March 00, zero. So this means the day is not known. Or for example, we have brackets here in the next example. Um, the next example dates uh, from the year 772. Uh, the month is not known, but it might be the seventh of that unknown month. You have to keep in mind that register can be of two types. Typically, a register is a summary of a charter. Then you have a, a date of issue and um, dating the charter is possible. In addition, there are historiographic, historiographical register, which summarize narrative sources, which make dating often a bit complicated. Then the layout changed to a block-orientated format. You can see an example from the dress register of Emperor Henry II. The date and place of issue information was printed above the register text in bold fonts. You can see it here and here. <clears throat> The upper register in this example picture has an uncertain year and the lower register has a range of years. Later, register were structured in different parts like the register text here. And you have additional informations about the date and place of issue and here additional information about archival history and in some register we have comments and footnotes as well. The modern style of the register, for example in the register of Henry IV, Frederick III or Maximilian is very close to the layout 
of the online register MPREE on our website. Here you have the date of issue, the place of issue, the register text and the different parts of the register. The digitization project was faced with a challenge of preparing the partially inaccurate date information in a common scheme, which could be used for retrieving register by date information via web interface. As far as possible, the extracted dates were saved according to the format um, four digits for the year, two digits for the month, and two digits for the day. It looks like ISO format. Oh, ah, yeah, uh, yes. <clears throat> if the information was not clear, double zeros were added instead. So, for example, here we have the information that the register is from 770 March, but the day is not known. You remember the example, some slides before. Or here we have the information that the register is from 770, unknown month. Um, and here we have the seventh of that unknown month. But remember, uh, the question mark is missing. Even with these measures, some levels of uncertainty were left untouched. But the main goal in these early stages of the register and PRE online was to give access to the digitized res register on the, on the web interface. The users then could read the register themselves and interpret uncertain dates. Modeling uncertainty in a machine readable way was not in scope. If we had to do it again today, we probably would have used the extended date and time format, EDTF. <clears throat> um, so how was the way to the EDTF? Principal date and time formats were specified in ISO 8601 in 2004, which has become the international standard for the representation of dates and times but it only provides basic data and time formats, which are not sufficiently expressive to support various semantic qualifiers and concepts. While it could express the concept the year 1076, it could not express approximately the year 1076, or we think it's the year about 1076, but we are not uh, sure. In many cases, these various other concepts had therefore often been represented using ad hoc conventions. EDTF, um, which since 2019 has, be, has uh, been part of ISO 8601, now provides a standard syntax for that. Here you can see some examples with register dates expressed in an EDTF con compatible format. The base format of EDTF looks like the normal ISO 8601 format, so four, <clears throat> four digits for the year, two for the month and two for the day. If concrete parts like month or day is missing, this part is left out. For example, here in this example, you see only 770 March, or um, there are two X's added here. Our second example from 770 unknown month, and we are not sure about the seventh uh, is here expressed in the second line with two X's and a square uh, question mark. <clears throat> okay, we can have a look uh, at, the others, at the other examples. For example, here, we are not sure about the year. So there's a question mark added to the year. Here we have date ranges. Here we have date ranges as well. And here, uh, this is a date range as well, but unfortunately it starts uh, yeah, at the 1st of January uh, in, the, in the year one. In the digital hum humanities research, data is usually stored in databases like MySQL, Postgres, especially when the data is to be published on the internet. Dealing with dates often means using the available functions and data types of the databases available. But these databases are not able to handle the EDTF format. So all functions for querying dates in EDTF format, for example, query, querying time ranges, have to be implemented 
into the website by the developer explicitly. That's one reason why the Register and PRE didn't use EGTF, but preferred a strict date range structure with an explicit start and end date. With that, we get all dates in a machine readable format ready for being used with standard database programs. You can see here the same table as shown before with our expressions um, in start date and end date. And if the, the date is uh, only one date explicitly, start end and end date are just the same. So let me come to the conclusion. There are pros and cons for all systems. For example, the expression of date before 1440 uh, November 7 in EGTF implies a date range from the 1st of July in the year 1 to uh, 1493 uh, November 6. Or the problem of expressing a vague year with explicit month and day with a date range. But with a close examination of examples, it becomes clear that modeling uncertainty involves a large degree of subjectivity. So from our point of view, forcing an editor to express uncertainty with dates in date range reaches two goals in a sufficient way. Getting explicit results with recorded subjectivity. Thank you for your attention.